It doesn't matter if you've made an amazing brew or a terrible brew. Here are three questions every home brewer should be able to answer. Here are those top three questions that every home brewer needs to answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell you each one and then I will dive into them. So um, let's just go ahead and do it. Number one, did I sanitize everything well? Number two, it's kind of a two-parter. What were my ingredients and what was my starting gravity? And number three, are my yeast comfortable? Let's go ahead and unpack every single one. All of this is going to help you hopefully be able to answer questions about your own brew or help you ask the right questions if something goes wrong. So number one, did I sanitize everything well? The bare bones basic side of brewing, the most essential thing you have to do is sanitize everything really well. There are a ton of different sanitizing products out on the market. Um, I personally use Star San and uh, I really, really like it. So I use it on everything that touches any part of my process, whether that's a spoon um, or that's my containers. I try to sanitize everything to get rid of any bad bacteria. We are dealing with a live um, culture. Yeast are our culture, uh, bacteria are cultures that can overtake a brew really quickly. So when you're mead making or beer making or wine making or cider making, whatever you're doing, you need to make sure and try to sanitize everything well. And all it takes is a little bit of a bad bacteria to take over a brew, which creates a bad alcohol on the end. And sometimes those things are salvageable, but oftentimes they're not. So make sure you sanitize everything well. That goes for good or bad brews that you've made. Number two, um, what were my ingredients and what was my starting gravity? Let's talk about the first half. What were my ingredients? This is as simple as knowing what you put in your brew. If you're not writing down the things you put in, then you're never going to be able, be able to recreate that brew if it's good or if it's bad or whatever you want to do. So always write down your stuff so you know what's going into your brew. Even if it's one cinnamon stick, okay, write it down so you know what the heck you put into it. And that also helps you be able to ask the right questions if something goes wrong. Let's say you start a brew, it goes south. If you get on one of the many different forums for brewing in general, you're gonna find that most people wanna know what you put into that brew to be able to help you in your search for the right answer. So that helps a lot. It can also provide lots of information as to um, maybe why your brew was successful or was not successful. Maybe you used a really bad type of uh, juice as a base, or maybe you got some weird malt extract instead of the thing you're supposed to get. Who knows? So that's important. Write down your stuff, know what you're putting into your brew. The second half of this is what's your starting gravity or specific gravity as we also call it. The gravity is what tells you how alcoholic your um, brew is gonna be. So you have to have, and I'm saying have to, because in order to understand and be able to calculate gravity, you need a hydrometer. It looks like that. It's a little glass tube, has some markings on the side. You float it in your brew before and after it is finished fermenting. And that helps you calculate out what ABV, ABV percent you have. And I'll put the equation here to help you calculate that. But if you have your gravity um, written down somewhere, your starting gravity, then you will be able to know, at least in the gist, what and how alcoholic your brew is. If you don't have a hydrometer or some way to measure gravity, you will never know and you'll never accurately know. You can only guess at that point. So. Uh, that question is really important because if you know both your starting gravity, specific gravity, and your ingredients, you can answer a lot of questions if things go wrong or things go well. You can also know what you want to do in the future with that same brew if you made it again. The last one is, are my yeast comfortable? So here's the important thing about brewing. We are depending on yeast, which are a living organism, to create alcohol that we like. In order to do that, we do have to provide for them. Yeast have different requirements. Uh, beer yeast need different things than wine yeast. And that's important to know because at the end of the day, you are providing, hopefully you're providing a suitable environment for your yeast to ferment in, then they're happy and comfortable and they um, will further and better ferment on the brew you're making. 
couple things to consider with this. When you're brewing with a yeast, every single yeast have a alcohol tolerance. So they can go up to 14%, they can go up to 8%, whatever you need to know in that regard. You have to know that information because when you are calculating your, um, your gravity and you have your alcohol percent for your yeast, if the gravity is higher than what the yeast can handle, then you might have a situation where the yeast are stressed and they could be uh, struggling some or you know, put off bad flavors essentially. You also need to be able to um, tell what or not percent, what temperature range your yeast need to ferment in. Every single yeast has a different comfortable range. Some like 55 to 70, some like 70 to 90. And if you're not fermenting in that range, um, it's not always the end of the world because some yeast actually have a wider range than they say, but most yeast will not do as well if they are outside their fermentation range. So make sure you stick to what the yeast says. If you need to know what it is, Google it. I'm using this uh, Belgian yeast, whatever. Um, and you can find normally information on the internet about that. So that's super important. Your yeast are what create the alcohol, what create the good thing that we like, which is that the alcohol in general. So you wanna provide for them. They might need nutrients. They might need a good temperature range, stuff like that. Make sure they're comfortable. Essentially, that's what I'm saying. So the three questions, super important. Did I sanitize everything well? What were my ingredients? And what was my specific gravity, starting gravity? And number three, um, are my yeast comfortable? If you can answer all three of those, I promise you, there is a high likelihood you're gonna be creating great brews um, and maybe not in the beginning, maybe you, you have to learn a little more about this, but you will have a greater start than if you just go in flying blind. Can you make a good product by throwing things together, not taking your gravity reading, not sanitizing well, um, not really caring about your yeast? Yeah, but you're leaving a lot to chance and brewing is a lot about science. Brewing is a science. And uh, when I first started home brewing, I, I did not understand that. And now as somebody who has over a hundred brews underneath my belt, from beers to wines to meads to ciders, um, I can definitely tell you that this is a science. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you will like and subscribe. I have lots of content. I make a lot of mead related content, but I also do beers and wines and ciders. So um, it's all a lot of fun and I enjoy getting to do these videos. This is a lot of fun in general. So make sure you like and subscribe. Check the links down below if you want to support the channel. And I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Cheers.